Hey guys, welcome to the next video in this channel. My name is Abraham Gill and today we're gonna continue with the lighthouse. I'm still a little bit sick. I'm recovering from this like influenza flu or whatever got us, me and my family. Uh, but we're ready to continue working. Uh, that's why I'm like super like well covered. I'm taking my uh, or eating my chicken soup and uh, making sure we, we recover nicely. But I didn't want to leave you guys hanging with the lighthouse. So let's go. Now, for those of you that haven't seen our last video, we have another video in the channel. Maybe you didn't saw it because we are releasing two videos today. But it's a very important video. So go check it out. Pause this one. Go check that one out and then come back. So uh, taking a look at the roof tiles. I want to work on the roof, roof tiles today. There's actually three ways in which we can do roof tiles for our, um, for our game. Our game asset. Uh, by the way, I have not finished the... Remember I told you guys I was going to be doing the the placement of the whole thing, like all of the all of the wood elements. I haven't finished doing it uh, ever since I got sick last week. I think it has have been going crazy. Um, so yeah, I'm just... Um, it's not an excuse, it's just a reality, right? So I had to take care of my family. That's why I haven't been able to continue with this one. But th don't worry, like we're, we'll continue right now. So there's, uh, again, as I mentioned, three ways in which we can do this roof tiles right here. The most basic one would be to just get like a roof tile texture, which there are plenty online. And if you get like something like this, like a tileable texture, you just tile it through the through the whole rooftop, and that's it. The only issue is it looks very flat. That's kind of the um, that kind of technique works really well when you were when the elements you're working on, like World of Warcraft. Uh, it, it's like a super ex expansive world or something. So it, it works nicely, right? Like you're, you're gonna see this sort of stuff and this is how the, the houses are usually made in, in, the, in, in World of Warcraft. Now they start doing this and this is a technique that I, I've seen Blizzard used a lot and that is to kind of hide the fact that things are just flat surfaces. They, they either bevel or they add like another element to the border of things like here. Like they add this wood beam kind of like creating like compartments for the textures. And that makes it look nicer, right? Because as you can see here, you, you don't worry about having this such effect where, where it just like ends. Like this is very old World of Warcraft, right? But in the in the newest editions, they, they do this sort of trick where they would like compartmentalize. I love that word. It's an, it's an English only word because it doesn't exist in Spanish. Compartmentalize, which is like make compartments out of the texture tiles and it makes it look nicer, right? Because you, you're not dealing with this sort of like super awkward thing where you just see like the tiling. So this is the most basic one. I'm not gonna be doing this one. Now the most advanced one would be to like actually, like actually like model and sculpt every single texture. Like I was looking for some reference and I saw a guy that did this very amazing like roof tiles uh, inside of Sears. can't find it right now. Uh, but yeah, like if we were to model and, and texture, like give its UV space to each specific tile, that would be another one, which again, too much. It's, it's way, way too much. So I'm going to be doing like a hybrid between those things. We're going to be creating 10 different tilings or 10 different like, like wood tiles. Let me look here. Like medieval, medieval wood tiles. Let me see. If, this one, look at this guy. This is made by Kim Tai uh, Young. No, sorry, Tai, yeah, Kim Tai Young. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. And he did this, like, the sculpting, and it's amazing. Like, it's it's uh, it's kind of like a shader, like a tileable shader. Uh, but you could also, like, just grab, like, this model that we see right here and then just duplicate it several times. It's going to be, like, super high on polygons, of course. Uh, you would need to get, like, a low poly and stuff. Uh, but you could get this uh, into your game engine. You could use displacement as well, which is not bad. But I'm going to try to keep it simple and easy for you guys to follow. So... What I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna extract this face. So I'm gonna say mesh or edit mesh and uh, duplicate. So now this face has been uh, duplicated from that particular instance. Um, you can actually press, uh, I'm gonna say center pivot and I can go a W or sorry, uh, uh, yeah, W click and I can go normal. So object mode, no, it's not oh, object, where is it? I think we should be able we should be able to kind of like flatten this out. So let's go to the right view. There we go. So if we were to like just move it like as close as possible to the ground plane, and then just grab all of the vertices and just uh, move this scale to the world, and then just bloop. That's gonna like pretty much flatten it out. So I know that if I build my tiles on top of this thing, then I'm gonna be fine. Now uh, on the picture itself. If we take a look, it's a lot of tiles. Like I can see probably like 30 tiles and then like maybe like 15 rows of tiles over here. So so we can go crazy. And that's why I'm, I'm suggesting suggesting that we do like a 10 or so different tiles. So I'm going to grab this guy right here. 
And yes, we're going to be using tileable textures like what we did with the with the wood beams. But I do want to model this guys in a, in a little bit of a, of a nicer way. So of course we're going to have like a like a really clean tile like this one. And in this kind of cases like or this kind of object since there's going to be so many of them, I I do recommend to keep it low, but not super low, right? Like we we can go a little bit crazy. So that's going to be like my basic one. Then I'm going to duplicate and uh, actually it, it might be a good idea to do a no, no that's fine. Uh, yeah, to do a UV like a quick UV. So I'm just going to freeze transformation UV because this this cube already has like proper UV. So if I just do control U Control U. There we go. We're gonna get a nice uh, like distribution. I, I might even grab this guy right here and say um, modify or over here UV. Cut UV. Control U and then Control L. There we go. So now we have the like the border and this other side, and that that should give us a nice like a uh, element here. And the reason why I want a UV first is because now I can start creating some variations for this roof tiles. So for instance, let's add one variation where this guy is bevel, like this corner, and I'm just gonna bevel it like so, like this. And some of you might be wondering, but Abraham, that's a, that's an angle. Angles are bad. Yes, they are bad. But if you just triangulate them, they're just gonna be fine. Like that's a that's a perfectly valid geometry and no no problem at all. So I'm just gonna grab a new one. Um, I mean, we can just like grab this guy and just like duplicate it or rotate it. Let's turn. I'm gonna press E and click. Oh, by the way, I forgot. Uh, I just discovered there's this uh, software called Karnak for those of you. They want to know about it and now uh, down here i'm going to have all of the like clicks and the shift so if you're ever curious about our uh, uh, hotkeys they're going to be down here most of them are going to be here except for when you press like control and alt like in or, or shift control shift you know in sea sometimes we do like two or three key presses at the same time that's not going to work but in sea for instance when you do like a uh, brush damien standard brush damien standard you should see the like the combo over there so yeah so let's just grab this thing right here I'm going to break connections and just like rotate this 180 degrees. There we go. I'm going to grab this first one again, control D. Now let's do like this sort of like triangular thing that we have sometimes get. So I'm going to add a, a line right there and then I'm going to go to like this area right here and then to like here and then all the way back here and there. Oh. There we go. I think I'm, this might be a little bit too big. So I'm just going to grab this guy right here. Just move this over here, grab this faces, delete. I'm going to say one, two. We might need to, to re, uh, what's the word, to re uh, work certain like UVs and stuff. But as you can see, like we're creating some, some nice variations. And now what I can do is, for instance, I really like this one. So let's create a new one here. And then this one, not only are we going to have that one, we're also going to like bevel a corner, right? And then uh, again, we're just going to have to grab this face and this face and say mesh triangulate because I'm keeping the, the topology as low as possible. Um, let's just duplicate this one, rotate to the other side, 180 degrees. That's uh, six variations that we have right now. I'm probably going to have two variations of the first one, just like rotated as well so that we have like different kinds of textures. There we go. And uh, let's take a look. Let's see what, what else can we do? Like I'm going to check my reference. Yeah, maybe like a like a stronger border. So I'm gonna grab like these two guys again. So control D. Oh, it's first transformation because they're mirrored. And like this one right here. I'm gonna grab this one. I I'm probably gonna like let's double both sides. Let's just get double like that. There we go. I like that one. Maybe this one, like this edge is gonna be like further down. So like a very broken uh, piece of uh, of tile. And then this one, we are gonna um, bevel as one, just like a corner. Like that, yeah, like, like a big corner. There we go. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, ten. Is that ten? Yeah, that's ten. So perfect. So we have our ten uh, elements right here. Now, uh, right now, what I could do is I could just uh, assign the like the wood beams or wood pillars that we or wood beams, sorry, that we have just to get a, an idea of how this thing is, is going to look. And as you can see, it doesn't look half bad, right? Like most of it's actually looking very nice. Quick UV technique that we can do here. It's not a pretty UV, but it's going to work for just for for now. I can do UV and do a uh, planar mapping from a Y axis. And it's pretty much just gonna like go from top to bottom. As you can see here, we're gonna have this sort of like fibers, but it's pretty like close to what we would expect, right? From a, from a wood grain, like that's roughly how we would see. Like on the sides here, might not be the exact same uh, thing. Uh, but here's another trick that we can do. I'm just gonna grab all of them. Let me combine them real quick. I'm gonna go to the uh, side view. Let's go F. And I'm gonna grab like all the side faces. Or actually, let me. Uh, let me grab like uh, which is the best way like this, yeah, and then 
trying to find a way to, to grab. Okay, let's go front view. And then I'm gonna deselect like this front faces because the front faces do have the proper like orientation that we're looking for. It's just the side faces that we want. And this only works because the textures that we're using are gonna be tileable. If this was not a tileable texture, then we would need to, to do it a different, a different way. Like that one, I think I'm gonna leave like that. Like the ones that are like a little bit like more intense, like these two inner ones. These two inner ones, there we go. And I'm just gonna go into my UV techniques, planner mapping, and this is gonna be on the X axis. So as you can see, we're gonna get this. However, we're getting this on the, on the wrong way. I'm just gonna click this little T right here I'm gonna rotate this so that they are 90 degrees, as you can see right there. So now the UV mapping is, is properly like giving me this like side uh, view of the whole thing. Now it's just a matter of creating the actual tiling, and and this is why we needed like a couple of these guys. Now, I'm not gonna use this ones; these are the original ones. I'm gonna duplicate them. I am gonna mesh, uh, separate, grab all of them, and say center pivot so that we can pivot them V to snap them on this like a border right here. And I'm just gonna start like creating a small patch. Now, don't worry, I'm not crazy. I'm not gonna place like hand place everything. Like if you wanna be super perfectionist, then yeah, that would be like the best thing to do. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not that crazy. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna create like a little bit of a fun effect right here. Like modify some of them or not modify, like just like position them in, in different like places. Like maybe having a little bit of variation here and there. There we go. And now, I'm gonna grab all of them, control D, move them up. I'm actually gonna move their pivot points back and just like push them out like this. Actually, this one's I don't like anymore because of that. So let me grab this guys. Control D, go back to world so that we push them in there on the exact same like plan or, or element right there. And uh, with the best idea or the best thing you could do here, let me isolate this thing so that we're only working on this guys. I, I definitely want to see the plane or use the plane because I, I want to make sure that we don't see through the plane, like those lines right there, because on a game, that would mean that uh, we will have. So I'd rather have like a little bit of overlap uh, or a lot of overlap, that's fine, uh, rather than seeing like the, the bottom side. So there we go. Uh, now, of course, we need to switch things around, right? Because we, we don't want these guys to be in the exact same position. So it's a matter of just like moving a couple of these guys around. Again, the, the main point of doing this sort of like uh, movement here is to avoid having or seeing the same texture everywhere. So adding this sort of like variation is gonna be really, really good. So whenever I see like this thing is duplicated, let's just move it over here. And there we go. Very important that the pivot point for these things are uh, like back there. Now I'm just gonna gra grab this one again and control D, move them back, create the next row. I'm just gonna do three rows right now. And then again, we can just like grab this guys right here Let's move it to the side and then like that. It's kind of like a mi mi mix and match of things, right? Like, like we're trying to make this thing work. So just be creative, find, find good places for the whole thing. I'm trying to make sure this matches because we're going to, we're going to be doing remember the randomized transform tool. Have we used that one on this, on this video before? I'm not sure. I remember. But if not, just a quick reminder, there's a very cool tool called, or a very cool plugin that's called Bonus Tools. You can download it directly on the, um, on the Autodesk site. So just look for Maya Autodesk, uh, so, sorry, Maya Bonus Tools. And, and you're gonna get this little thing you just install in this, there we go. And there's this modify randomized transform, or randomized transform basic that we're gonna be using. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna grab this guy and I wanna do a very slight uh, scale, so probably like a 95 to 102 scale. On all axis is fine, I'm just gonna say random scale. You're gonna see that all of them like switch like slightly. And the more you do it, of course, the more they're, they're gonna be like changing. So I, I don't wanna do that as many times, just like a, just like one time or something, there we go. Um, and then I'm gonna do like a slight, uh, like a movement. And the movement is, is gonna be on C because I want some of them to be like further down and further up to give it again a little bit of variation. And I, I want very slight movement. So here's where you would check the values. Let me like phrase the transformations real quick. So if I check the value here on C, it's like point, probably one and minus one. So I'm gonna say minus one and one, and it's only gonna be on C. So I'm gonna grab all of this and say random move. And you can see that they're gonna like shift a little bit. We can do the same thing like on, on X, I think. So random move on X just to get get a little bit of, uh, of something there. 
And here's where I would definitely like go and manually just like fix a couple of the errors. But I wouldn't necessarily fix them in, in such a way that that uh, we just like uh, move them and that's it. Like here's where you can like scale and move things around because again, this is kind of like a like a section. We're, we're creating just a section of the of the of the wall or the of the roof. And, and by creating this sort of like variation on the, on the section, that's what's going to give us this very nice effect. Um, this kind of holds, again, you, you kind of want to avoid them. It's, it's not going to be the end of the world if we leave some of them, right? But uh, it might be a good idea to change them around. So I'm just going to grab them, and now I'm going to do like a very small rotation. So, so I just want to have like, a, you know, a, a one degree rotation. So it's going to be like a minus one to one on the y axis. See? Oh, that's too much. So minus one to one on the y-axis so as you can see it's just a eh, something something there i mean you can you can keep going right oh sorry there we go uh, let's close this you can keep going and adding as much rotation as you want but things are gonna start getting like a little bit crazy and i don't like those like super big holes so so i want to keep it uh, maybe a little bit more something like that that looks very good so now it's just a matter of grabbing all of this guys i will definitely leave a copy somewhere uh and just like duplicating and then moving them and creating like the whole the whole wall right so so something like this and then just shift d shift d shift d shift d now you can see that there's a slight bit of something there like a like some sort of uh incline on the on the handle there so i'm gonna freeze transform and everything and then change my movement to world okay that's fine so i'm gonna say control d it seems like it's going like down or something i'm gonna i'm actually gonna like Let's let's keep those like an original like match over there, and then this one we're gonna combine again. Delay history, center pivot, and now I'm gonna go to the front view. Just make sure that this is as straight as possible. There we go. Okay, that, that looks good. So again, just like duplicate, and then shift D, shift D, shift D, shift D. Okay, I'm not sure if it's the it, it's probably the plane, right? Is it the plane? Yeah, it looks like it's a plane. So so I'm I'm gonna trust my gut here and and understand that it's not my my tiles. So I'm gonna go here into phase mode. Let's select like all of this faces, delete. Delete, there you go. So it's like we have like a duplicate. Do we have a duplicate everywhere? Oh, yeah, sorry. So we have a duplicate everywhere. Let me fix that. So let's delete this. Because these guys are fine, but this one's it seems like. Yeah, see how there's like a duplicate? So no worries, just delete that one. Let me make sure that we don't have duplicate here. No. No. Okay. So grab this guy. Control D. Move them back to where they're placed like this. Combine. And then Control D. And then Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, Shift D. And over here, I should be able to just select these faces. Delete. There we go. Delete. Because they are like going over the whole thing. There we go. And we have this thing. Now, I'm pretty sure, yeah, see, that's that's straight. So I'm pretty sure this is straight. The plane is the one that's not straight. Don't worry. I'm just going to have the whole thing. Duplicate or, or combine again. Let's move this up just so that we can see how they're going. So let me, like, rotate them. No, that's fine. I'm just going to control D, move them backwards, create the next, like, layer of, of, uh, of tiles like this. Control D, backwards, control D backwards and i'll probably stop there i mean we we could like scale everything that's another option right like if we need to cover the whole area just scale things out a little bit more and that should cover the whole rooftop so this one we don't need anymore because we now have our complete rooftop now as you can see uh things are looking a little bit like repetitive like we are seeing we're still seeing the hole which we can always have like just, like just a plain like painted brown or something and uh and that can help like get rid of the of the of the holes in here um, and if we were to, what I can do here is I can go here, it's going to get crazy, but I can go and say mesh separate so that each specific tile is a separate a tile now, like each one is a separate tile. Go here again, uh, let's delete history and, and freeze transformation, center the pivot point. Now, since the pivot is center, like we can't do as many like deformations, like the rotation things, uh, but we could be able, or we should be able to do a little bit of, uh, let me save this real quick. <laughs> because the, the modify or the bundle stills here, the modify random transform sometimes uh, messes up. So I'm going to go random transform basic. And let's do another like small scale, like a random scale. So now you can see there's there's more overlap between things. Let's do another like random rotate. There we go. 
So now uh, the tiling shouldn't be as uh, obvious because we're adding or we have a lot of stuff. I would definitely combine this into a single object because you one of the worst things that you can do for any game engine is have an object. As you can see, this is not a, a heavy object. It's only 13,000 triangles. It's, it's super light for like a, like a real. It, it, won't, it won't be an, a problem. But if you have like, uh, like 100 or 200 objects, even if they're like super small, it, it's more difficult to, for, the, for the thing to process because it needs to think about the, all of the objects. Instead of thinking about one object that's very heavy in geometry, it needs to think about hundreds of objects that are very low in geometry. So it's kind of like a, like a performance thing. Some engines are really good at doing it, but in Unreal, I, from what I've been told, it, it's not the greatest. So let's just like rotate this back here. Let's go again to the right view. Now it's time we position this and see if, if our... Uh, okay, so it seems like our uh, size was a little bit off. That's fine. I mean, here what we can do is go into scale mode, object mode, and just like scale them up. Let's go into object mode in the move tool as well. And just like position them there where we want, and there we go. So again, as I mentioned, like this plane right here, we can just paint it like a, again, like a brown color or something. And, uh, and that should be it, right? Like uh, eventually, like, like you could have like a, just like a basic plane. I wouldn't go all the way down here, right? Like I would keep it like a little bit higher, but that way when you see this thing, it's just like a texture. And uh, with shadows and everything, because we don't have shadows right now, there we go. With shadows and ambient occlusion and everything, that rooftop is gonna look very, very cool. So here, I'm just gonna control D, uh, rotate the other way around. Let's go right view. Actually, we have to go like this. No, oh, actually, I mean, if we want tiles to be working properly, uh, let me, so we duplicate it, we duplicate, and then let's go to rotation world, there we go. So we're just gonna rotate 180 degrees to this side. Go back to W, press W, so like world mode, so that we're in world mode, and we just uh, position this on the on the back side of the, of the little house. And again, this is kind of like the best of both worlds because it is going to be like optimized. It's 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 not a lot of geometry. It's only again 1,300 uh, triangles. It's it's fine, and uh, and we do get like this very very cool effect. So when a player looks up there, you will be able to tell a little bit of the of the effects there. Uh, of course, once we have the like the little thing like the spears over there, uh, you can see that there's a couple of tiles missing. So this is where I would definitely uh, like just grab like a like a couple of like tiles here and there and just delete them. It's gonna definitely help create like this sort of like effect where, where things are not perfect. Uh, same thing like over here, like here, here's where, where you can like actually play around and, and create some, some very nice um, variation right on the, on the, on the house um, because you have access to all of this individual like shingles. I think that's the name, shingles or elements. But yeah, that's it guys. Um, I'm gonna try and, and see if I can finish this by tomorrow. I mean the, the wood placement that I was promising. Uh, because now I want to show you, I think we're going to go with the, um, with the rail, uh, the thing over here, the rail thingies. Yeah, I think that's going to be a good one. So make sure to leave a like, share, subscribe, you know the drill. By the way, we have some very cool announcements. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you haven't gone back and checked the other video that we submitted today, check it out because a lot of cool things are coming here to the next two channel. And um, not only we have that great new, I have one more new that I'm gonna be sharing throughout the, the week. So stay tuned, make sure to hit the little ben bell icon so that you get like the notification when we upload new stuff. And uh, that's it, make sure you practice, keep going, keep growing. I'll see you back tomorrow, bye-bye.